In this example, we have a warranty that can be purchased separately. Now let's start reading through the information provided. The indicator as that V Limited enters into a contract with its customer. The contract meets all the criteria per paragraph 9. In terms of the contract, V Limited sold a camera to a customer on 1 July 20x15 for cash. On the purchase of camera equipment, V Limited also provides its customers with a standard warranty that provides assurance that the camera purchased complies with the agreed upon specifications and will operate as promised for a period of 12 months from date of purchase. V Limited also provides its customers with an option to purchase an extended warranty for an additional 12 month period. These warranties are sold separately for 2400. Now on our right hand side you will identify that I have included my five step model briefly. I've identified that this will fall within my transaction price and our variable considerations. Remember our certain contracts and then we need to work through our two questions. The first question does the customer have an option to purchase the warranty separately? If our answer is yes, we will have to recognize a performance obligation and recognize our revenue in terms of RFRS 15. Now, second question, does the promised warranty, now this is important guys, they refer to our promise warranty. This will be the standard warranty that they provide to the customer. Or part of our promised warranty provide the customer with a service in addition to the assurance. Now we need to ensure that we read the information provided. They indicate us in addition to the standard warranty, V Limited's customer also chose to purchase an extended warranty for another 12 month period. Therefore, our total transaction price is 55600. The camera cost V Limited 35,000 and this we will use as our cost of sale. On 1 July 20x15, V Limited concluded that the standard warranty is only an assurance warranty. Therefore, immediately we can identify that our standard warranty will have to be recognized in terms of IS37. Now, when we briefly work through our five steps, the first step, yes, there is a contract. The second step, we need to identify our performance obligations. Now, the transaction occurred on 1 July. Our client paid cash. Now, guys, there's a reason why I've included a picture again. If you think about this, our entity receives a total amount of 55,600. Now, let's just park that there. We need to identify our performance obligations. The first performance obligation will be to deliver our camera. The second performance obligation we have identified is our additional 12 month warranty that our entity sold. Remember, first question, can it be sold separately? Yes, this is a performance obligation. Therefore, this will be our additional warranty. And now guys, the third important thing to identify, but this is not a performance obligation. This will be our IS37 provision. And this will be our standard warranty. Now this standard warranty we had to identify is our IS37 
37 provision that we will have to recognize. They indicate to us that the total transaction price is 55600. Now, do you agree with me? This total transaction price includes the additional warranty. Yes. Now, when we read further, they indicate to us in the next paragraph, on this date, V Limited has also determined that the camera is a distinct good that can be used on its own by the customer so that this is a performance obligation. Since the extended warranty can be purchased separately, it is also a performance obligation. Therefore, we will recognize two performance obligations. Then they indicate to us that the transaction price of 55600 comprising the standalone selling price of the camera of 53200 and 2400 for our extended warranty. Now guys, they indicate to us that our transaction price equal our standalone selling price. Therefore, when we refer to our number 3, our transaction price is the 55600 and number 4, we need to allocate our transaction price to our performance obligation. Now, this is easy. This is exactly the same. If we now have to recognize our transaction on 1 July, what will our journal entries be? Remember, our entity receive the total 55,600. When will we be able to recognize our revenue? When we satisfy the performance obligation and control has passed. Therefore, when we look at only our camera, do you agree with me that this will be at a point in time? And when we look at our additional warranty, purchased this will be over time now how do we recognize the overtime remember we will only recognize the revenue when we satisfy the performance obligation but we have received the cash therefore do you agree with me that this will be income that we have received in advance and our journal entry on the 1st of July 20x15 will be to debit our bank account as the cash is received, the 55600. We credit our revenue relating to our camera. They've indicated to us that this is a value of 53200. And we credit our revenue received in advance to the value of 2400 Then we need to remember to recognize our cost of sales. We will debit our cost of sales and we will credit our inventory with the 35000 that they've provided to us. And now guys, we need to remember to recognize our provision for our warranty remember you will have to credit your provision for your warranty and debit the expense account in your profit and loss now what will the value be they've indicated to us in this paragraph that they've estimated this value to be two five zero. In the next paragraph, on 1 July 20x15, V Limited estimated that the cost to replace any components in the camera in the period covered by the extended warranty based on experience would be 2000. Now guys, important, they are referring to our extended warranty. Therefore, the extended warranty portion, this will be the portion that they purchased additional 
our revenue received in advance amount of 2400 then on 15 November 20x15 a defective component in the camera had to be replaced and the cost of the replacement was 2100 now this is on 15 November 2015 if we look at our timeline do you agree with me that this will fall within our normal warranty that is covered by our provision, the 2,540? Therefore, this payment should be made out of our provision. And this will be for November 20x15. If we take this out of our provision, we will have to debit our provision account and we will credit our bank or creditors with the 2100. Then by 30 June 20x16, no further repairs or replacement of components were necessary relating to the assurance warranty. Therefore, immediately we can identify the remaining amount, which will be our 2,540 minus the 2,100. We can now take out. Therefore, our journal entry will be to debit our provision and credit our profit and loss expenses with 440 Rand. Then on 1 October 20x16, a defective component in the camera had to be replaced. The cost of the component was 950. Then the next sentence, on 2 February 20x17, another defective component had to be replaced and the cost is 600. Now, what you need to identify is both of these dates will fall within our additional warranty that we have purchased. Therefore, first that we need to identify that we now need to recognize one revenue that we will have to transfer from our income received in advance account and two we need to recognize the payment relating to the cost the 950 and the 600 now this is easy guys you will have to debit your cost of sales and credit either your bank or your creditor with the 950 and the 600 but how do we now allocate the revenue from our income received in advance account? Recognition is easy. You will have to decrease your income received in advance. Therefore, debit income received in advance and credit the revenue as we can now recognize revenue from this transaction. They indicate to us in this paragraph above our journals. V Limited has established that the revenue will be recognized over time for the extended warranty in accordance with RFRS 15. V Limited uses an input method to measure its progress towards complete satisfaction of the performance obligation and will use the ratio of costs incurred to total estimated costs to measure performance. Now, total estimated costs. Do you remember that they've indicated to us? Yeah, guys, in this paragraph on your left-hand side at the top, that this total estimated costs is 2,000. And then costs incurred. The first amount is 950 and our second amount is the 600. 
Now, how are we going to allocate this? Now, our first transaction is the 950 and divide this by our estimated cost times our 2,400 revenue received in advance. And this will be a total of 1140. Therefore, guys, this is the amount that we can recognize as revenue from our 2,400. 1140. Then our next transaction relating to the 600, and this is important, you need to add the 950 plus the 600. And this total divided by 2,000 times 2,400 will be the total of our revenue that we can recognize. But it is important that you identify that we have already recognized 1140. Therefore, we may only now recognize the 720. Now, what happens with our remaining portion? This will be profit. Therefore, guys, we can recognize our revenue. They've indicated to us that there is no further components that will be replaced. And our remaining portion will be the 2,400 minus the 1,860. And this will be 540. And we can now recognize that 540 as revenue, debit, income received in advance, and credit our revenue.